I think there is a taste of effort in this small batch, but it's there. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 16 of season 14, and before we get on with the episode review, obviously there's the big news that the show has announced that it is going to be ending next season, and admittedly I am very happy about that. I do feel that the show has needed to end for some time, and I am excited to see how the show will end. I am very worried. As most of you know, my feelings about Andrew Dabb. I hope that it ends at least on a somewhat positive note. This actually was a decent-ish episode, and it's because it had nothing to do with Robert Singer or uh, Andrew Dabb. Directed by John Fitzpatrick, I think his name is. Fitzpatrick has done a bunch of really cruddy episodes <laughs> over the years, but some of them have also been decent. They haven't been, like, outstanding, but they've been okay. And this episode is basically a rip-off of the Wendigo, but instead of it being Wendigo, it's a tree thing. It's called a Katono or Kakakonono or whatever it is. Kuna Matata. I don't really know, I'm but... <laughs> The episode plays out very much like the Wendigo episode in terms of a creature in the forest that is eating people and the brothers go out and find it. And they actually, in fact, have Adam Beach on this episode. Now some of you may be wondering who this actor is, but if I show you this photo here, you'll be like, oh, it's that native guy who was in those movies that I watch. So yeah, he's actually a pretty big actor in Manitoba, so it was cool to see him in this episode. And he kind of gives the precursor sort of the lore behind the creature of the Kuna no 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 whatever it is, and after what Sam finds out earlier. But this episode actually played out a lot like something from the first season because Sam is looking at reports and they talk about people who disappeared over the decades and it was very reminiscent and I actually didn't mind it. And also it was directed decently too. There was some actual effort from the cameraman. There's some interesting angles. The monster is shot pretty darn well until it's defeated, then you can tell they ran out of budget. But every interaction with the monster is actually pretty cool. Now, however, there's a side story going on, and for some reason it includes those kids that were the worst part of the 300th episode. It's just this really unnecessary interactions with Jack. Now, obviously, he now that he has his powers, and because he's basically a two-year-old in, in a powerful body, he's having these kind of childlike interactions with other characters, and it was okay when he was first introduced, but the fact that we're on a second season of this, it's starting to run dry very, very, very quickly, and you felt it immediately with his storyline. And I know there's supposed to be him kind of, a, kind of a juggling back and forth with the morality of what he can do after he accidentally stabs one of the kids, but holy crap. So much of this episode was taken up for that storyline and it was very unnecessary, very dragged out, and very boring to be honest. I wanted to go back to the monster the whole time. The episode itself is okay, excluding Jack's story. It was very reminiscent sort of of the older episodes. Admittedly, still not shot as in Gene, kind of as creatively or as much effort as the original episodes, mainly because I noticed that a lot of them are very static shots. They stand in one area and they hang out in this one area and then they move to the next. They don't really try and vary it up. Like if you were to compare this with the Wendigo episode, you could tell that there's far more effort, far more location changes, and far more just ways of tricking you into imagining that this is actually a really wide open space. Whereas this episode is pretty standard and they're obviously on a budget and a time constraint and whatnot. But Either way, it's not a bad episode, it's not a great one, but it's far better than anything Dab's written, so I'm going to give this episode a 4 out of 7. Uh, if you guys like this review, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. I am going to do a little video maybe talking about why Andrew Dab is just such a bad thing for this entire series, and why the series finale really hangs in the balance, but I guess we'll see about that. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed the video, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. You're probably wondering who I am. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. <sniffs> By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural, or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? 
I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> to see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.